Hi, this is Phil from TeachBlend, and today we're going to look at Microsoft Teams using a mobile device, but on a staff perspective. So what Microsoft Teams essentially allows college staff to do is communicate with their departments, hold video meetings, and work on files. It also means that they can mark students' work, have meetings with students, and provide remote lessons and more. So this video will show you how to use Microsoft Teams, but on a mobile device. I hope you find it useful. So the first thing to do is to download Microsoft Teams from your phone's app store by searching Microsoft Teams. You'll then see the Teams icon and you can open up Microsoft Teams. You'll then need to put in your college username, which is typically your college email. Once you've done, click sign in and it will then ask you to enter your password, which again is typically the college password for most of the systems that you are using. Once you've done this, it'll ask you a couple of setup prompts and guide you through the main features of Teams. The first thing to look at is the settings, and this can be accessed by clicking the burger menu, and here you'll see various options. The first thing we're going to look at is setting a status message. Here, this is useful if you are not going to be on Teams for a certain amount of time, you can set a status to let people know. The next is notifications, and in here you can manage the notifications that you get on your device. I'm going to close this off now and have a look at some more options. So again, clicking the waffle menu, you'll also be able to access settings. In settings, you'll have various options, such as being able to put dark theme on, manage your notifications again, but also be able to add extra accounts and sign out of this account. The next thing to look at is the search and feed facilities in Teams. So to access search, you simply click on the search icon in the top left. And here you'll be able to search anything in Microsoft Teams. So this could be searching for a person, a file, a particular message, and then pressing on these will take you to the direct chat or to that person. So this is a real useful way of navigating yourself around Microsoft Teams. The next thing to look at is the feed in general. Here, everything is brought together from all of your teams, and you can also filter these. So for example, you can filter unread messages or messages that have been replied to. So this again is really useful. Next thing to look at is chat. So click on the chat icon and here you'll see all of the messages that you are a part of. And these can be group messages or individual messages. But chat's great to use away from the actual main team. To start a new chat, click the icon on the top. And then here you'll be able to put in the person or people that you wish to chat to. In here you'll have multiple options, such as being able to just write a, a typical message such as hello and check in with each other. But you'll also be able to send images, GIFs, multiple files. You can also at mention various people and include voice memos. You can also have video conversations with people within that chat. So it might be just one individual or multiple by clicking on the little camera icon at the top right. And then here it'll engage a video call with that people or more. So this is really good to check in with your students or various colleagues. The next thing to look at is Teams in general. So clicking the Teams option will list all of the teams that you're a part of. This could be that you have teams that are cross college. So for example, your department, but also teams for classrooms. You can also manage the teams that you see on the home page to make it a little bit easier to see. So teams are essentially classrooms. You can create teams by clicking on the manage icon and choosing create team. The two main teams to create are classes and staff. Class teams are made up of students and teachers and staff teams are made up of staff members and owners. So I'm going to create a class team. So here it'll ask you for the team name and then you can add your students and teachers. If this was a staff team, it says owners and members. I'm just going to add some test students to this class. You would add all of your students. So I'm just going to add Elon Musk to my classroom. And then I can also add some co-teachers if applicable. So this is really useful if you've got a couple of staff members in the team. Here you'll see that you've got the general interface, which consists of posts, files, and more, but then also at the bottom, how you can create new posts. So what I'm gonna do is just create a new post and say hello to my new classroom team. Once you have typed your message, you just click send. So here I'm just gonna write in my hello message and then press send. Here, all of the students or staff will see this message. They can click on this message and they can do various things like like it. And if you click on the message, you'll be able to edit the message or delete it if you need to. 
Staff members, students, and yourself can also reply to messages. So it's really good to facilitate discussion. I'm just gonna create a new message now. And what I want to do is give a resource to students. So I can click on the attachment file and I can now browse to various files and locations on my device. So here I'm just adding a PDF document about Excel. This could be anything to do with your classroom. I'm gonna give a little message to just give some context to the students that they need to look at this file. And then I'm also gonna ask them to reply and comment on this document. So once I've done this, I'll just click send. And this again is really useful to engage students. I can also add extra files rather than PDFs. So it might be that I want students to look at a presentation, for example. So again, I'm gonna click the attachment file now and I'm gonna to browse to a presentation that I have created. This presentation I'm just going to click on and then I'm going to upload this to the team. As you can see now the file is uploaded and I can now type a message to my students to ask them to have a look at this presentation. It's worth noticing that when you add this file it will open directly into the browser on the phone but if students for example have got PowerPoint open it might be that you've given them edit access and they can actually open up this presentation and they can edit it. So this is a real useful way of engaging your students with lesson content and more. Another top tip would be to add some voiceover onto your PowerPoint and then send that to them. So again, a real useful way of engaging students. You'll see that the feed in general now looks like this. And I'm gonna click on a couple of these files such as the PDF to see how this would look for the students and yourself. Again, if this were a staff team, you'd be able to collaboratively work on files and presentations on the go. So it might be, for example, someone's asked you to check a presentation. You could put this in the team and you could view this and even open it up in PowerPoint if you have the app installed on your phone. So a real useful way of navigating around Teams using a mobile device. Also at mention various members of staff or students within the team and you can also at mention the team itself and this gives notifications directly and will also send an email so this is useful if it's an important message for example and you want to get their attention. For more attention to various messages it's useful to use the formatting button and in here what you can do is you can bold messages highlight but you can also set alerts so this is real useful for example it might be that the students have got an exam coming up or there's a particular change to a session etc so again all you need to do is click the formatting option and then here you'll be able to write in your important message and this highlights to students or staff that it is important so a nice easy way you don't have to use important, it might be that you just want to format a title to your post as well. So again, you can use the same options to be able to do this. The next thing you can do is you can also add various things to your team. So by accessing the extra button, you'll be able to upload various things such as location, praise or more. Here you'll see I'm adding some praise. So this is great if students or staff have done really well, you can type their name in and it will alert them that they have got some praise. So this kind of replicates what you would do in a classroom, albeit virtually. It's quite a nice little thing to do to tell students they're doing well or members of staff. And this will publicly put it in the channel. I'm just going to show you another option that you can do in Teams, which is when you click on the free ellipses again, you'll also be able to add YouTube videos. And this is a real useful feature because what it allows you to do is directly give students or staff members links to a video. So again, really good for learning. This example, I'm just putting a picture, a video of a dog walking, but it could be any video you like. And you can also type a little message about this video to contextualize it a little bit more, give some instructions to the students. Another top tip is you can also add voice memos to the team channel by clicking on the voice memo icon at the top and this will hold a little recording. Again, a nice useful way of being able to give some information to students in a slightly different way than just text. If you click on the free ellipses, you'll be able to edit the message, but also add some extra features. One of these that we'll look at is called save. So if you click on the save icon, what this will do is it'll essentially allow you to select various messages that you want to look at and keep into a collection. So this is really useful for those important messages that don't get lost. As you can see, I've clicked save now. And then as you can see on any page, there's a real little red line. When you pull this up, it opens a drawer and there's more features such as files and camera, but you'll also see one that says saved. 
When you click on this, it will open up your saved messages from Teams. So this is a real useful way of staying organized. You can also press on that message and it will take you directly to that particular message within that channel. So this is a real nice, easy way of keeping things saved without losing them. The next thing to look at in Teams is the tabs at the top. As you can see, we've been working in posts. If you click files, any files that you've added will be added. And then more, you'll see class notebook, assignments and grades. And this is on every single channel. Class notebooks like a virtual notebook and then assignments and grades allow you to post assignments to students and grades will give you the grades for those students. The next thing to look at in Teams is also how we manage them. So if you click on the free ellipses, you'll be able to manage individual teams. One of the things you might need to do is add extra students, for example. So you can do this by clicking on add members and then add in your extra students or staff members into your team. It might be that you also need to mute students, which you can do within the same interface. So again, really useful. The next thing you will also need to do in your team is manage channels and the channels again clicked by pressing the free ellipses allow you to structure your team. So by default you'll have a general channel but you can also add extra channels into this and general channels can sometimes be for example revision where you have a revision channel as you can see here. It might be that you're setting up channels for your individual course topics, units or more. You'll also see in each channel, you'll see post, files and more. And you can also post into these individual channels separately from the general. So a nice easy way of keeping your course organized. You can also do something called private channels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna manage my team again. I'm gonna click on manage channels. And this time I'm gonna add a private channel. So by clicking the plus button as usual, I'm gonna click and write support channel but I'm changing the privacy to private. Here, any students added to this channel will be together, but the general people or the general students or staff members will not see that channel. So this is great for having extra resources, for example, for particular students and differentiating your online classroom. You can also add notifications and more within private channels. I'm just going to go back now to the home page and as you can see all of your teams and channels are listed but if you swipe right you can also pin these channels so this is really useful if you want to have a quick navigation to various channels that you use a lot it's a nice easy way of navigating yourself around the team next thing we're going to look at is assignments and in assignments you'll be able to get students to submit electronic assignments back to you for marking so for example here i'm just going to create an assignment within my test class so i'm going to click on the plus button and i'm going to choose new assignment you can also set some self-marking quizzes here as well once you've clicked a new assignment you'll be able to add in a title and in the title you'll be able to explain a little bit about what the exam or assignment is and then below that you can also add a, cat a category which is nice to be able to search for in instructions you'll tell the students what you want them to do and then below that you can also add resources now resources can be presentations and word documents to view but also things to edit so for example a presentation you could ask the students to edit this and they'd all get their own copy or even a writing frame here you can see I've added a Word document and I've set my options to can't edit because I just want them to view. But you could put edit each own and they'd be able to edit that document. You'll also see some extra settings such as who to assign it to if you want a particular students to have access to the assignment. You can also add the date due, the time due and also run it through Turnitin for plagiarism. So this is really useful if you're wanting to check the students work for assessment for example. Once you've clicked assign, all students will be notified or the students you have selected to do that assignment will get a notification. So again, this is a really easy way of telling students they have an assignment in. You'll also see the assignment posted in the class. So if I go to my test class demo now and click in the general tab, you'll see that the assignment has been posted and so will the students. You can click view assignment directly in the channel as well as the assignment button at the bottom to be able to view the assignments. Here you'll see that I can give Elon Musk, for example, feedback, I can view his work and also add, add points to that assessment. If you click on the more tab, 
you'll also see assignments come in here and you'll see which students you have marked work for, who has had the marked work assigned and any that are outstanding. In grades, you'll also see the students grades, what points they've got for the assignment and more. So this is a real nice way of using your mobile device to mark students work and view their grades very easily. In calendar, you'll also see all of your calendar events that are brought through through Outlook. You can also join meetings on the fly if they've been scheduled to be a Teams call. So for example, I'm joining this meeting now. You'll have all of the features you're used to using Teams on a desktop device, but on your mobile one. The next thing to look at is actually how to schedule remote lessons. So you can also schedule remote lessons and meetings directly on your device. So here, as you can see, I'm going to schedule a remote lesson. You can add to channel the participants. So anyone in that channel will be added. So it's just easy rather than adding all of the participants separately. You can also check in what date and time the meeting will be displayed and also create a description and more. So this is a real nice way of creating a meeting or lesson using your device. Once that is set up, you'll see that your students and yourself will get that notification in the team. So if I click team and general now, you'll see that the remote lesson has been scheduled in that channel. Students or staff members, depending on if it's a meeting or a remote lesson, are able to join this directly from the feed. So here you can see I'm going to click details and then I can choose join. As the organizer, you can also join this way. You'll have all the options you're used to, such as turning video off and your mic, as well as a couple of extra other features. Once you've added into the remote lesson, you'll have all of the functionality, such as being able to start recording, turn on live captions, and even share your mobile screen. So this again is really useful to use your mobile device to engage in remote lessons or remote meetings. If you click on the calendar, you can also join remote lessons and meetings directly from here. So it gives you a couple of different ways on accessing these meetings. The final thing to look at is the slider. So you'll notice the little red dot at the top. Here, if you slide this up, you'll have extra options such as your files and camera. But what you can do is edit the navigation. And what this does is it affects the navigation at the bottom. So you can personalize this to have the most common apps that you use. So for example, I might put files on my navigation preview at the bottom, and this will affect how my device now looks. So this is a real nice, easy way of making sure Teams is personalized to you. I hope you found this video useful. Please remember to give us a like and subscribe to TeachBlend. Thank you.